Good evening. Or morning, afternoon, whenever you're listening to this. I'm Bethany Van Delft, and this is the 10 Booze. I <laughs> get it? A special Halloween edition of the show where in the time it takes to sort your candy by type and order of preference, we find out what's spooky in the world. In today's episode, we'll find out what fort nightmares are made of, get the buzz on some killer bugs, learn about an eerie Broadway tradition, and find out what spine-tingling new donut flavor was created just in time for Halloween. Stick around till the end of the 10 for that tricky treat. Okay, let's get into the 10 news. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Sure, getting candy with your friends is fun, but what about earning pumpkin rocket launchers with your squad? Our correspondent Bridget Todd has an update on some exciting virtual fun, starting with the annual Halloween event, Fort Nightmares. Thanks, Bethany. This Halloween, the game Fortnite is getting spooky with Fort Nightmares, their Halloween edition. And here's what it's like to play. So what are we playing right now? I'm playing Fortnite, the new... Uh, Halloween spooky edition, Fort Nightmares. So I see you play Fortnite all the time, but this looks so much spookier than it usually looks. What's going on? It's really spooky now. There's all this Halloween stuff everywhere. Uh, when you get killed, you come back as a shadow creature and have to hunt down the living. Uh, and it's pretty stressful when uh, you're out there and there's all these undead chasing you down, just whole hordes of them coming to slash you with their spooky claws. Does it make the game more fun to have it be spooky? It is nice to have it be spooky. Uh, it's nice to change it up a little bit. You know, it really changes the game to have this new element. You know, it used to just be regular elimination, battle royale. Once you were out, you were out. But now you come back in this army of the undead. Is it helping you get in the Halloween spirit? It is, yeah. It's kind of nice to feel spooky. And that's not all Fortnite is doing to get us in the Halloween spirit. On Halloween night, musician Jay Balvin will play a concert in Fortnite at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Virtual concerts on games like Fortnite and Animal Crossing have been one way that everybody's been staying entertained in the quarantine. But just what goes on in a virtual concert? Adam Arigo designs virtual concerts with his company, Wave XR. Tell us about Wave XR. What is it? We make a platform for producing, distributing, and monetizing virtual concerts. Our concerts are uh, live, they're avatar driven, uh, and they can be experienced in a bunch of different ways, like on YouTube, in video games, and in virtual reality. Wow. So if I go to a concert in virtual reality, what can I expect? Actually, I don't know what you'd expect. Anything's possible. Unlike a real show, in virtual reality, you're not, you don't have to adhere to the laws of physics or gravity. So we've done concerts where the audience could fly, where the performer was a thousand times normal size and would explode into a bunch of stars. Uh, so <laughs> sort of like a, a mixture of a video game, a concert, a uh, live stream, and a dream. Wow. How did you get the idea for working in this space and the idea for putting on virtual concerts? I've worked in video games for over 10 years, mostly in uh, music games. Like if you ever played Rock Band, um, I was a, a designer at th that company, Harmonix. And I've always been passionate about letting people experience music in new ways that ultimately bring people closer to each other. Do you think that virtual concerts will be a really popular option even after we're no longer sheltering in place and no longer, you know, under quarantine and all of that? I think that won't go away even after we return to quote unquote normal and concerts come back. People will still use this uh, method to promote their music and also just to reach fans who don't get to go to real shows like kids, like most like concerts are, you know, 18 plus or 21 plus. So um, if you're a kid, like you normally have to wait till you're older to go to a show. But if you were to see a concert in a game like Roblox or Minecraft, like that's accessible now. And um, when we've done concerts, we've had people say in the comments, this was the first concert I ever attended. 
So my last question for you. So let's say that there's kids out there who are so taken with all all the things that you're saying and they want to work in the virtual space. What is your advice for those kids? Yeah, I think video games, um, even though your parents might tell you not to play them um, for several hours at a time, which I agree with, uh, actually are going to become a lot more important as a uh, medium and a technology and an industry um, in the future. So um, learning to uh, code, if you want to become a programmer or getting into game development, just like becoming an artist, a, a 3D modeler or animator. There's so many different jobs in the games industry, and I really, really recommend um, learning how games get made and potentially going into that career because it won't. You'll have skills that will apply not just to um, literally making video games, but so many other things like making virtual concerts or creating avatars for. Uh, people to socialize uh, within these 3D spaces. I love it. Well, you heard it here first, kids. Keep playing video games. <laughs> <laughs> but, but like, listen to your parents, you know, try, try to limit your screen time. Did you know that almost all Broadway theaters share a common tradition of leaving a single light on at night when the theater is empty? It's known as the ghost light, and superstitious theater folk debate whether its purpose is to ward off, distract, or light the way for, you guessed it, ghosts. The most notable is the New Amsterdam, which is said to be haunted by the ghost of Olive Thomas, a former showgirl from the Ziegfeld Follies, a series of productions that ran throughout the early 1900s. Olive is such a big part of the theater's culture that there are pictures of her hanging near the exits and entrances where the cast and crew traditionally blow her a kiss at night on their way out to keep her happy. You want to keep a ghost happy, you know? The ghost light actually does have a more practical purpose. According to stage managers, because the edge of the stage hovers right above the drop into the orchestra pit, the light helps make sure that anyone on the stage after hours won't accidentally fall off because they can't see the edge. Ah! Beware. Our next story is a chilling tale of murder. Hornets! (laughs) From Friends of the Ten, Lane Farber of the Nature Nerds podcast. Keep listening if you dare. Happy Halloween, my friends. With spooky season in full swing, I think it's about time we chat about the terrifying, creepy crawly that's been making headlines this year. It's a horrific creature that's killed millions, brought entire communities to their knees, and is threatening to destroy life as we know it. Well, at least for the bees, that is. That's right. Today, we're talking about the dreaded murder hornet. The Asian giant hornet, affectionately known as the murder hornet, is a species of hornet that is native to Asia. Despite being the largest species of hornet, the insect is not a reason for concern in Asian countries. It's a natural part of the ecosystem there. It's only when the murder hornet is introduced to new environments that its destructive power is unleashed. Unfortunately for those of us living in the United States and Canada, the murder hornets have arrived. Uh Uh-oh. Scientists don't know exactly how the insect got here, but they do know they want it gone. And for good reason. The Asian giant hornet gets its murderous reputation for killing bees. Like, lots of bees. Just a few murder hornets can wipe out an entire colony of bees in a matter of hours. The massive bugs are brutal and efficient killing machines. Their favorite way to dispatch a victim? decapitation. Yeah, they straight up bite the heads off of bees. So obviously murder hornets are not great for bees. But why should we be worried about them setting up shop in America? Because we need bees. Did you know that bees pollinate roughly one third of the food we eat? That means that after every third bite of food you take, you should find the nearest bee and give them a fist bump of appreciation. Uh, on second thought, um, a thumbs up should do just fine. So whether you like them or not, bees are important and we need to protect them so that we have food to eat. Insect scientists called entomologists 
are working hard to make sure our bees stay safe from the murderous hornet invaders. Just last week, officials located and destroyed the first murder hornet nest in the United States. Hooray! They found the nest by attaching trackers to captured hornets and releasing them. The marked insects led investigators straight to their secret hideout and were quickly eradicated. News agencies have been celebrating the victory all week. But wary scientists remain on high alert, for they know the battle is not over. Just like any good horror film, the villain may reappear at any moment. Murder hornets? Seriously? All right, 2020, keep it coming. To learn more from Lane, check out her podcast, Nature Nerds. Is it a trick or a treat? Either way, it's time for your trivia question of the day. What spooky new flavor did Dunkin' Donuts release this month? Was it A, blood orange, B, ghost pepper, or C, lady fingers? Did you guess it? The answer is... B! The spicy ghost pepper donut is the first spicy flavor ever released by the popular chain. The deliciously daring donut, as Duncan describes it, ooh, (laughs) alliteration, is topped with strawberry icing mixed with cayenne and ghost pepper, one of the world's hottest chili peppers. Would you try it? Not me. I do know some people that would put hot sauce on a donut, though, so this is for them. Time's up. That's the end of the 10 for today. You can catch new episodes on Tuesdays and Thursdays. The 10 News is a co-production of Small But Mighty Media in collaboration with Next Chapter Podcast and distributed by iHeartRadio. The Halloween edition of The 10 News was written by editorial director treacherous Tracy Crooks with contributions from Stephen Toomkins, Bridget Odd, and Lane Fearher. The creative producer is Jenner the Friendly Ghost Pasqua. Marketing is led by Jacob Brunstein, with web support by Frightening Adam Farr. Editing and sound design by Pete Monstro under the production direction of Jeremiah the Terrible Tittle. Executive producer Donald Aldark and show creator Tracy Bleeds Kaplan round out the team. If you have any questions about the show, a story idea, or a fun fact you want to share, email us at hello at the 10 newscom And don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review The 10 News on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts.